Hello students, welcome to the series lecture of analog communication. Our today's topic is need of modulation. Outline of this today's lecture is it comprises of the uh, definition of modulation. Then we'll discuss what is the need of modulation. Then we'll discuss types of modulation and we'll end our lecture with the applications and example of modulation. See, if you want to define modulation, to modulate that means to regulate. So I want to change one signal with respect to the other signal. That is what the process of regulating. In the modulation process what we are doing is we have one signal that is called as carrier wave and the characteristics of carrier wave we are going to change with respect to the voltage or instantaneous amplitude of the message signal. So let's say this is your message signal which is of low frequency and then we are going to change the characteristics of carrier wave in terms of amplitude this is the example of amplitude modulation and the below example is of FM modulation frequency modulation so you can see that whenever I have peak voltage in message signal at the same time I have the peak voltage of modulated signal so it is varying with respect to what the modulating signal in case of frequency modulation even you can see that in case of frequency modulation a frequency of carrier wave is going to vary so you can see that when our message signal is at peak value its frequency is high and when it is at lowest value its frequency is low right low and this is also low so this is how the modulation occurs now let us understand what is the need of modulation the first reason behind the modulation is that it can transmit the signal up to the long distance because after modulation a signal becomes strong so it can transmit the data up to long distance it reduces the size of antenna now this is very important why and how it reduce the size of antenna so see generally uh, we have the quarter length uh, of height in antenna so it is defined by h is equal to lambda by 4 this lambda is nothing but it is wavelength and it is generally defined in terms of ratio of velocity of light by frequency so this velocity of light is expressed as 3 into 10 is to 8 meter per second for an example let's say if i have low frequency signal of 1 kilohertz if you put this value 1 kilohertz into this equation right what you will get you will if you calculate you'll get the answer that is 75 kilometer but this 75 kilometer of antenna you can think of this is not practically possible so we require something Right? So in modulation process what we have is we have low frequency signal which is our message signal and then we have the high frequency signal then we multiply this low frequency and high frequency signal and combination of this two that will produce the high frequency right so that is that is how modulation occurs you see you take this example let's say I have high frequency right? one megahertz if you put one megahertz into this equation then you will get the height of antenna that is 75 meters which is practically possible right so that we require ultimately high frequency a strong signal to send so that we are using modulation that is what the second need another need of modulation is that we can send the multiple signals on the same channel see we cannot make the as many channels as many users have right so we require a common channel through which all the signals can be passed so that is also possible when we have the different message signal and all those different message signals are going to be multiplied with the different carrier frequency and then we can send it on the same signal at the receiver side we can have the tuned receiver to receive only per desired signal so that it is possible so using modulation this particular thing is possible this is very important another parameter that we need to discuss it provides stability and noise rejection see normally it is tendency of noise when it, it interferes with the weakened signal now when you do the modulation your signal becomes strong so that is the major region for rejection of noise and in analog communication we have one parameter which is called as signal to noise ratio right which is given by generally p of s by p of n where p s is nothing but it is signal power and p n is the noise power so signal power should and it is a condition in analog communication for the faithful communication this ratio should be greater than one it is only possible you have higher signal power than the noise signal power 
so if you make your signal strong then it is possible to have a good communication right and it becomes stable it is a stable communication that is why how that is how it provides a stability and noise rejection these are the different types of modulation. See, we have two types of communications, one analog and another is digital communication. In case of analog communication, these three are the different types. And in case of digital communication, we have another three different types of modulation. In analog communication, we have amplitude modulation, frequency modulation and phase modulation. Whereas in the digital modulation, we have amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying and phase shift keying. These three methods are there. Though, see, uh, as we have the lecture of analog communication, we are going to discuss these three types of modulation schemes in upcoming lectures. Which are the applications? See, uh, generally, these modulations, most modulation process is used for the data transmission. So, it is used for the broadcasting of both audio and video signals. See, when you are listening the FM, FM radio, in your mobile that is what one of the application and we can say that it is the example and the system which is using a modulation that is your mobile right this is uh, shown just radio over here but uh, every mobile ipad everything television is all the signals that we are receiving that is just due to the help of modulation in television we are using the modulation scheme that is amplitude modulation but in that also we have one type which is called as vsp so that is called as vestigial sideband modulation that modulation we are using in television so this is one single example when the uh, in upcoming lecture we'll discuss all these things in depth till that bye students and i hope you like the video please subscribe to the channel in next lecture i'll be able to discuss about the derivation of amplitude modulation we'll discuss about amplitude modulation its time domain representation frequency domain representation and mathematical derivation of that Fine. Thank you. Have a good day.